you want to know how to make a million dollars. It's simple math. You, it's all a numbers game. You got to get more leads. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Hurricane Ida Storm Report. In this video, you're gonna learn how to make seven figures off a hurricane. I'm here with my friend, my brother, Tyrone. Man, brother, welcome to the show. Man, how you doing, brother? How you doing? This guy right here, he, of course, come from the Navy. More importantly, the first time I ever saw him was on a football field. He was crushing people as a running back. Grew up with my cousin and was trained by my uncle and mentor. How long have you been in the game, bro? Man, I've been in the game for 14 uh, plus years, man. Um, how, about, I, how much I, you I, sold? Millions? I would say, man, millions, man. I, uh, I would say at least eight years consecutive for selling $2.5 million a year on the dime. Definitely seven-figure earning a roofing business. And so I'm going to talk to you, the owner, the sales rep, whoever is in contracting roofing that wants to make money off a of hurricane there's five simple steps to make a million dollars in a hurricane, and we're also going to give you an update on this hurricane, Hurricane Ida, the RRCA storm report. Let's get them kicked off. Dude, if this is as good as the conversation beforehand, you're in for a treat. All right, step number one. All right, this is something that we never used to do, and I was talking to Tyrone. He's heard all the bullshit, all the sales talk, and he's like, boy, if you're going to try and teach me something on YouTube, it better be good, right? Yes, sir. Talk about it back in Ohio. Were we landing these big commercial jobs that we're landing now? Uh, no, sir. So how did Uncle Marty do it? Uh, number one, man, just uh, scaling the business. I mean, honestly, we would actually market out the, the whole entire city up front. And then we were old school because, I mean, you know, it was back in the day. So we would actually go out, canvas the door knock, and, you know, beat our knuckles all day. And residential is the bread and butter. But I would tell you that uh, the people that make the millions of dollars in the hurricanes are a lot of the large lost guys. And so if you're a roofer, a general contractor, a water mitigation guy, you want to learn how to land more large lost commercial deals. Look, guys, you got to like and subscribe to this stuff because I've released some heaters uh, where we did behind the scenes stuff where you saw me close HOAs, where you saw us cold call town halls, build back these huge hurricane affected properties. Lots of training you can't get anywhere else. Landing these big jobs is first about setting it down. So I'm talking to you, Tyrone. He does a lot of residential and wants to do more commercial. Start off as a goal. One of the goals, land some commercial jobs. You're going to have, you always say, work around the six packs of where we're building. We have came here in Hurricane Ida and set up two offices. One on the north side here, Covington, servicing all the town. And we had the big commercial job, the Hyatt-centric. And this has been a, a multi-million dollar roofing project. It's a uh, 90% complete. It's on Canal Street. And you know what this has done is it allowed us to have a job where we can point at this, this massive commercial project that we've completed, along with other jobs in the state of Louisiana. This is gonna create a domino effect. And, and so for Tyrone, you know, figuring out how to get a list, we use an app called Land Glide. You can download it on your iPhone, drive around these commercial builds that we're doing and drop pins. What we do with the pins is we create a database. We look up the cell phone number, the email address, who's responsible for the decision on the property. We have a technology that we use. It's called Reonomy. If you want to go check it out, you go to reonomy.com forward slash Lee, you can get access to it. What have you seen with RRCA and how we get these build jobs, you know, from a guy who does mostly residential, what, what are you seeing? It's two, two storms now, Pensacola here. Man, honestly, man, I've seen a, a, a very big difference. Um, um, basically in a, in a mindset, if a guy actually is going to do 20 million versus a guy doing 100 million. And, and honestly, um, the homework everybody thinks is is easier, but the homework is actually a little bit more harder. But at the same time, you'll get a bigger reward in the end. And so I think, guys, what I, I would totally tell you, man, to, to do the homework, and I think in the end you'll get the results. I fucking hated homework in school. Let me tell you, I'm an immediate gratification person, and that's what it comes down to. It's the uh, whenever you – what do they call that marshmallow test when you sit a young kid that's like four years old in a room and you say – Here's one marshmallow now, or you can have two marshmallows in 30 minutes. You know, every single person's going to take one marshmallow now most of the time. Mm -hmm. And when roofers, they want to go go into residential, they don't want to take the time to build the database. To send, we get most of our leads through a simple process called direct mail. Recently, we did a just a simple postcard and landed some really big jobs. And look, if you were a top selling person here, that's one of the benefits of working with us, is we give our top sales guys these commercial leads. And, you know, when these jobs turn into multi-millions of dollars in sales, like there is no better bonus than a commercial lead that converts, would you say? So let's go to step number two. You want to know how to make a million dollars. It's simple math. 
you it's all a numbers game. You got to get more leads. And one of the things that we did was we had a, a team of, we have an inside sales army. They're based out of Guadalajara. They're our homies. And let me tell you, they be getting leads like crazy. So run them telemarketing leads in the beginning. How's that help get established? I mean, honestly, uh, very well. I mean, because the thing of it is, is you we use them as a target market. They might send you over, you know, on the other opposite side of the city. And you you can land in an area where no, nobody's clearly has been there. And, and then you can tell, totally take over that area, man. So I, I think it's great. It's a great mechanism to spread around the city and hit each pocket. And that way you can really evaluate what each pocket may really look like. Now, look, there's a lot of roofers using telemarketing leads. That doesn't make us any different, okay? A lot of people are using door-to-door -door and telemarketing leads is their way. We buy a shitload of them. And, and, and not only that, we're on YouTube, Facebook, Google. You weren't getting no Facebook leads before you came. What do you think about the Facebook? I think I think it's wonderful. Uh, like I said, I'll say it again. I mean, coming from not getting any leads, any leads that I've gotten was what I actually went out, canvassed, and you know, and made up myself, self-generated. So me personally, someone giving you a first foot in, and like I said again, giving you a clear advantage to get around the city quicker than you would on your own. I think that that's very important. Now I'm reading a book called Blitz Scaling. It's uh, about a concept. When PayPal was created, they would give people a referral fee. And the guy, Elon Musk, and the creator of LinkedIn, he said they were standing on top of a building one day and he said, we're losing so much money because the transactions, they were losing money on every transaction. There's so many of them. If both of us were standing with a bag of $100 bills on top of this building, we couldn't throw the money over the edge fast. What happened? PayPal grew. More people saw the benefit of it and the network effects grew. And so it was worth it. It was overspending for clients. But what happens in the beginning of a storm, when you get your foot in the door and you build good jobs, what happens? Your business grows. You spread like wildfire. And we are... We, we came down with, uh, how many sales guys? Did we? we came down with about 60 sales guys. 60 sales guys. And so Tyrone was like, he wanted the whole team. We got 150 guys. At least get everybody to Louisiana. The, the deal is, luckily, Uncle Dudley got us into an area, got us a bunch of uh, really good uh, local people to use as a referral. One guy was on the city council, real well known, and we landed a town hall job. And we got this testimonial and we did this video and this video created thousands of leads. I think the video uh, that we did on town halls probably created, I don't know, 3,000 leads. Weldon's video is blown up. People know us. Have you ever, have you see people that uh, have seen us on the internet and then, and oh, for sure, for it's sure. It's like we're almost some local company because we decided they saw us on Facebook. Anyway, so if you want to know like what you can do different that no other contractor's doing, I coach a lot of contractors on how to create the video. They don't do it. Even Weldon, our guy that's our top sales manager, he's the best guy we got on video. He's so busy selling and coaching and managing his team. You know, I have to remind him to do video. And even though he, every video he ever does, Shoots leads through the roofs. And one thing about it is, is that if you're a sales rep with our company, you create a video, we have a technology that will get you the lead. So we make you a digital door knocker and we give you a virtual business suite. And now you start to get control of your time in a different level. And if you want to learn how to make a million bucks, it's pretty simple. If the average claims 25K, let's say the average commission's three grand. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you are what's their average? Let's say 30% closing ratio. So you get 100 leads, you're closing 30 deals. And off of 30 deals, you're a sales rep, you're making about 90 grand. To make a million bucks, you're going to need about a thousand leads. A thousand leads will lead to 300 jobs, which will arguably get you close to $900,000 in sales. Now, we teach you selling bigger jobs, tile roofs and commercial. You wouldn't need 300. How many leads can you run in today? Um, at least eight. At least eight? At least eight. How you do that super free? Well, man, honestly, man, um, I, I more look at it like a, a normal time clock, man. Um, if you use an hour on an hour, I mean, I think really, man, uh, you can detonate each each client, uh, each contract, man, within 30-minute time capsule. And um, honestly, I, I think that's really what separates the men from the boys, man. I it's mean, so funny, though. We, we had a bunch of leads that were wasted. I was in the beginning of the shoving leads down your throat trying to get you to assign them. So some of them didn't get run. And um, it's not your fault, but we actually had an answer for that. We had the inside sales department. Shout out to Ray. We had people working virtually. We would assign the leads that didn't get followed up on, and Ray would call them, deliver a written proposal through Zoom, and close them. And we manifested through a little bitty uh, small retail. It was like a 20-square roof no one wanted. These leads basically would give to a sales rep, ah, oh, it's a trailer. We don't want it. Ah, oh, it's a little 14-square. We don't want it. Oh, it's in the hood. I don't want it. Well, this lady was an attorney. 
and it ended up being a $1 million claim. It's approved. We signed it. It was out of the trash, the trash pile that we didn't get assigned. All because we have a system. If you don't have a system to keep up with the leads, spend all this money and money just goes out the hole. And if you don't have a guy like Tyrone and other people in place to kind of make sure that the sales guys are running the leads and that the leads are run correctly, then you end up wasting opportunity. And the, the, if you do get it, not only do you close the leads, you get area. And that brings us to the next thing. You want to make a million dollars in a hurricane? After you build around the big jobs and you get all the leads, all right, now you go hardcore door to door, you multiply your money. How do you do that? Well, if you're a business owner, it's about recruiting more sales reps. We were hitting the phones. What would it look like? James is hitting up everybody. We hitting up all everybody from our old network. If you're watching this right now, maybe you work with us or know about us and you're thinking about what's going on there. Let me tell you, we done built $10 million worth of jobs. We're putting on anywhere six, seven, eight. What's the most roofs that we built in a day? Uh, we'll say eight. Eight. We put on anywhere from five to eight roofs a day. Uh, how long does it take a sales rep to get a roof built here? It's taking us uh, 10 business days. 10 business days. It's a cool money in, money out market. And the beautiful thing about it is, is that it's uh, overhead and profit on every job. What are the numbers like? Range coming in between five, five or four square, uh, top off at 620. And those are good numbers in a southern market where we can control some of the labor costs. It's beautiful. I will tell you to multiply your sales reps, you have to call people to action, just like I'm doing right now. If you're a sales rep watching this, go to joinleehate.com. If you want to participate in this hurricane, Ida make a million dollars rush, dude, you can jump in this movement, be in this office before you know it. Only thing is we want top performers with high character that are the real deal and will weed the bullshitters out. So if you have character problems, you have problems that you can't manage, mental illness problems, you're addicted to drugs or drink too much, we don't want you. But if you are a man with a good work ethic and you are serious about what you do and you've got a lot of success, whether it's in solar and roofing and door-to-door, -door, Hurricane Ida is definitely an awesome place. Go to joinlyhate.com and you can fill that out. And if you're an owner, that's my secret, okay? I just gave it to you. Uh, that recruiting funnel right there helps separate the serious from the curious, and that's the difference between most business owners trying to get more sales reps. Tyrone, I spent my whole life trying to recruit you. How long did it take? About seven years. Yeah, dog. About was, seven years. About seven years is straight conversation. In every storm. In every storm, <laughs> dog. That's hey, Tyrone, will you come work with us? No, 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 no. <laughs> so Tyrone worked with my uncle. My uncle used to be a $100 million roofer. All I can say is, is that you need to be working on recruiting all the time. Getting out there, telling your story. Now, Tyrone's one of my GMs. He's learning how to be a better rec recruiter. Tell us your story in roofing. Man, uh, my, like I said again, uh, my story, uh, number one, um, I came. I come from Waxhatch, Texas. Man, I, I grew in as a living man uh, uh, with, a, with his uncle. Uh, man, I was introduced to roofing uh, at the age of 16, man. Uh, I was a big fan of the uh, Oshkosh and Appleton, Wisconsin region. Uh, we were running the hailstorm up there, working as gutters. Kind of branched off, went, went to the Navy for eight years, came back. And man, honestly, man, the gentleman asked me, I mean, what do you think about $100,000? And honestly, since 07, uh, I haven't looked back. He dared me to come in and, and, and learn learn his setting, his system. That's he, my he, uncle. He, he knew I was a fast a fast learner. And and so at the end of the table, man, within the second year, uh, I became one of the leading salesmen in, in his company. And then by the third year, I was, I was the number one salesman in this company from her on out. But but I will say, man, uh, just coming into this industry, um, I was able to raise uh, five children. I had uh, three girls, two boys, um, you know, not missing a meal. I mean, I would say for at least 10 years out of the 14, I was able to do an income above $150,000 a year. And like I said, man, it's been a blessing in disguise. Because uh, like I said, I've, I actually uh, traded going to the military, uh, turning down um, – Division One football scholarships. I used to be a ball player as well, and and actually for God to bless me to be able to come into this industry, man, and do the things that He's allowed me to do has been a blessing too. But but again, uh, it started from the gentleman giving me opportunity. Uh, like I said, come in as a live-in, uh, eat on the same table, see what he has ha, had to do. And like I said, just referring back to being 16, I was in uh, Minnesota, and he tested me. Uh, I was with one of his uh, best uh, sales guys. And I was his door knocker. Um, I got 17 leads in one day. And he's like, man, you, you a powerhouse sales guy. You were my sales guy. So he wanted me to go to the military to go get the discipline and then come back. And that way, then we, we, can, we can get right back at it, man. So um, I think it was a great plan. It worked out. And um, I really appreciate it. Look, man, I'm honored to carry the torch to have you on the team. But if you're in contracting, your job is to be a fisherman of men. 
and to always give back what was freely given to you. My uncle, my dad, they taught me this business. They gave me this opportunity, and I create all this content and share it with you for free. It's because it gives me purpose and joy in my life whenever people like Tyrone share that story of transformation. And there's so many different stories of transformation that have happened in this storm. Uh, we had a guy, Jeff Knapp, who landed that high eccentric job. He's probably going to do 5 to $10 million in sales off the storm. He's going to make seven figures strictly in commercial. We had a girl, uh, Christina, brand new to a company, a female. She's already hit a million in sales. Already hit a million in sales. Already hit a million in sales. Shout out to Christina. We have number three on the list, TJ. We have a guy that's turning in eight jobs, 10 jobs um, a week, 20, 30 sales, got a, a jobs a week. I mean, this guy's... Who knows, by the end of the end of the year, he's capable of doing $5 million in sales. You know, I've got my brother-in-laws, John Gillian and, and, and Jake Bueller. These guys are kicking some major tail. And look, there's a ton of success stories. You know, the idea is that you're the amount of people that are... It's funny, the first time I hit John up to come work with him, I said, dude, just quit your job. I'll show you how to make $250,000 guaranteed. And he thought it was the most cockiest, abrasive brash thing and we were here in new orleans it took a while for him to come on board but you know to see john transform as a leader and this is in his second year it's it's really cool and that's it's really what it's all about you want to multiply your money you need more men you need to train them you need to take the good men and turn them into leaders and then tyrone this year you know, over the last two years, he stepped up as a leader. He's one of our best onboarders, trainers, embodies hardcore door to door. I'd call him um, best chief revenue officer of any storm. And it's because the heartbeat of the storm is the sales team. It's the push. It's um, the coaching, the after hour works. Also, shout out to a guy, Weldon, in his second year, got sales manager of the year. In two different offices, the infrastructure of my team here and what it's able to do, it's like, it's blown me away. If you want to know how to make the money off a hurricane, whenever I was looking at my uncle's company and he had all these GMs, all these managers, these leaders, that's where really these companies, if you're a big company, but you want to go and participate in a hurricane, but you have your own business, you can't really leave until you have somebody like a succession plan like a Tyrone that you have moved up. We had talked about you coming into as a leadership to the next storm at the last storm. And we were preparing for this even before. And then it happened. New Orleans, what a perfect city. Kind of shut the door a little bit on Pensacola, get here. But the reality is you want to grow your roof and business. You need more salespeople. Now, let's take, a, if you're a sales rep watching this, the way that you make a million dollars as a sales rep, we've got a, custom, a group of ours, Kevin and Yvette. They got 300 roofs in their first year. They make referral partners. They make sales reps out of their customers. How do you make a sales rep out of your I mean, honestly, uh, taking care of your customer. I mean, honestly, you, you want to come in and actually blend in as family with, with, with your customer and know that you got their back. And so in, in return, they're going to turn around and have your back. When you go through a process of asking for referrals, whenever you are really making it about, hey, I'm going to make you a case study. I'm going to treat you like family. Then I expect for you to take me to your family so they don't get ripped off. It sets the tone. And when you learn how to extract referrals and turn your sales reps, make your, your customers and your sales reps, you go on the next door app, you get them to post for you. They go on their neighborhood Facebook group, they post for you. They make videos for you. You put them on the internet and advertise to their neighborhood. You take pictures with them and send direct mail to their neighbors. All this multiplies your money. And that's the key to make a million dollars off a of hurricane, dude. If you're loving this content, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification because the next step is the most important thing and it's where all the other people fail. It's where the men are separated from the boys, whether you're a sales rep or an owner. If you can't run tight production, if you can't, if all you can do is sell, but you can't build and collect, what you got, dog? Nothing. You got nothing. Because you can't get to your money. Yeah, talk to them about the guys that, that got nothing here that you're cleaning up on. Man, um, more than anything, I mean, you have guys go out and sell three, four hundred thousand and and just vamp. And, and in the end, I mean, when, when you, once you leave your money behind, you don't get paid nothing on it. This is where a lot of time you got these complainers. When I talk about these other people, these other people work for other companies. They haven't talked to their customers. There's millions of damaged roofs here. We're finding people with checks that sign contracts with other roofers and saying, I hadn't heard from my roofer in two months. How often do you hear that? Um, every day. What about they messed up my bill? They, 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 how long are they waiting for their stuff? Um, I've, I've ran into some um, gentlemen or women that's, that's waiting over 90 days for, for the roof to come out. I had a, one of the schools, they did a, a video. It was some stupid little dance. It said, all I want for Christmas is a new roof. I mean, these people are hurting out here with tarps every time it rains, it leaks. Running tight production, if you're a roofing sales rep, you work for a company, you can't get your roofs built. 
The roofs don't get built the right way. You can't get paid. See, we have a lot of hurricanes under our belt. We have interior rebuild guys. We try to stay away from a lot of that work, but we run a really tight production. We got two production managers. We got two different physical locations, one on the north side, one on the south side. We have our own distribution availability. We're pulling in resources from all of our different supply chain across the whole United States. You know, you talk about quality control and what we got to do to get better even at the thing that we're trying to do. It's in roofing, what's typical quality control for, for this hurricane environment? Our typical quality control for us is, uh, man, really just uh, man up the daily tasks. Uh, uh, coming in and we're... Teach the sales reps how to do it, right? right. That's number one. Talk we're, about what's a TRD. A real deal uh, sales guy. Uh, number one is a guy that sells bill collect. Uh, number one, he shows up in the, in, the, in the office 8 o'clock in the morning. He wants to get in, engaged with the sales manager, with his general manager, but also he's going to get engaged with the production manager. That way he actually knows what's going on on a daily uh, outcome of, or is on his, uh, his productivity on, on his bills. And then from there, we will move over to the interest company, the mortgage company, making sure all money is moving before we go ahead and get back out to the field. Now, let me ask you this. As a GM, when you have a central office, like our central office does all the billing, does all the supplements, it helps with all the onboarding and the digital onboarding process. Does that take some of the burden off of, 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 of your back? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. All the sales reps back. Most definitely. I mean, the, the whole office staff. I mean, because at that point, we can, we can double. We can quadruple what we do. Um, it's for us to take advantage of it and, 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 and be accurate and move on it. Having high quality builds, uh, being able to build quickly, that's what gets referrals. And, you know, good communication is good production. You either can get the roofs built or you can't. The roofs either get built correctly and done and you get paid or you don't. Because that's what brings us to the next step. Now, we're going to go and give you a little tour by tour breakdown of the storm in case any of y'all are trying to find all our secrets. We're going to give them to you. Don't worry. Just stick around. We're also going to give you a tour of the storm, show you how we use a digital production board, a real production board, what we do to celebrate our salespeople's wins. And we got a real contest for you and an opportunity to connect. Just stick around. Fifth and most important thing. It's not about what you sell, what's it about? What you collect. Talk to them a little bit about making a million, but not getting it, and why you wouldn't get it. The biggest mistakes in collections. Well, number one, I mean, a lot of guys will sell a million, and, and they say if you leave the storm, um, number one, you're only gonna get a, a third a third of, of the collections. So that would be the first, first mistake. But how hard is it to go clean up behind somebody that's made promises, that aren't on the contracts, that maybe has pissed off customers that hadn't communicated? Honestly, it's sometimes it's challenging. Um, but, but what you have to do, you have to re-engage with the client. You have to resell the client. And, and you and that client have to be on the same page. And you have to make a friend. And, and now you're going to go help this friend so you can be able in the end to, to collect the money. And you and the company to move, move uh, forward. But again... The gentleman that left the bad bass, yeah, he's only going to get a third of the commission. It's one of the things. We were talking today about how to get your team motivated. You're hang, hung over after the uh, long time in the winter. Well, you got to finish your work, and you have to eat the frog. If you don't finish your work and eat the frog in roofing, you'll get eat alive. And so many of y'all run from confrontation. You don't know how to finish your work. And real deals like us, we eat your fucking lunch. And we love it. You know, that's just more market share for us. If all you can do is be a contract baby back bitch, you're never going to be a million dollar earner. You're never going to be a guy to create your own uh, roofing company. And if you're a roofing company owner and you have a problem with collections, this is the reason why you don't have money in the account, why you can't pay your supply company bills. Dude, I've been in your position. I was just a sales guy, and I had to learn through a lot of failure. At one time, struggling a million dollars in the hole with nowhere to turn. I prayed one day. Gave it up to God, man. I did, in church. That's real. And, and it, it, it's only, it, it all became in perspective. I, did, I gave all my financial up and down swing roller coaster, and he said, dude, you stick to the script. You do it the right way. If you just do it right, you won't, you won't fail. I mean, that's, I just felt that. I don't know how it came about. And we changed the rules. We started requiring a first check before we ever started a job. Making that first check cover as close to the material and label as possible. Incentivizing sales reps to get first check, deductible, plus upgrades up front. More importantly, we created a collections department. The collections department now has got 10 people, ran by Shira, automated follow-up systems, and they're billing for the insurance company. We also now have a separate supplement department. After the years is built, last year a total of $7 million in supplements approved. We expect eight-figure growth in that this year, but this is another thing that really makes the process easier to get paid because a lot of these claims, how many of them have bad uh, estimates? Oh, uh, 85%. So when you go to the house, they have papers 
but you have to take the estimate. Show them how you're going to get more money, accept the money that they have right now, get them in the queue for production, get the claim approved as fast as possible and collect your shit. To do that, if you're a salesperson and you're focused on doing all that, what's it do if you have to do all that yourself? More, you're good at it, though. Well, well for but me, the sales I, have saying, to stop. They, yeah, you but, have to slow down, right? Well, well, yeah, you have to slow down. But I'm just saying, speaking for someone that's a very new guy, if, he ha- if he's left in that situation, then it'll fall apart. But an experienced guy, uh, it'll get done. But, it's, you know, but of course, it slows all the way down. Look, if you want to know how to be a better collector, the bottom line is, is you train your sales reps to handle negotiation better, to handle accountability better. You have a better intake process. You know, what we're trying to do at every single job this year, you know, we found in production the problem is, is when a sales rep leaves the company or when the sales rep encounters a production problem. So we're measuring the quality of our production department strictly on how quickly we're able to service problem repairs. And we have a lot of automation and new age things to do about it. But if you're trying to make a million dollars and you're focused on just the sales and you don't sell, build, collect, and you don't understand, it's not about what you sell, it's about what you collect. Building profitable jobs and getting your money. And it doesn't matter if you work with a company and you're the sales manager and you're an override. You got to pay attention to your money. You got to go over it. You got to talk about it with your bosses. There's things that change. You got if you don't pay attention to your money, your money won't pay attention to you. Exactly. And closed mouths don't get fed. More importantly, you have to send an invoice in to collect your money no matter who you are. If you're an independent contractor and you do not know your statement of account, eventually you have the ability to and then invoice it per se, ask for it. Well, in most situations, a lot of times that's in business, the definition of a closed mouth. This business has systems in place so that we'll have the financial meetings with him. We'll show him where the profitability is. Tyrone gets paid off the profitability of the whole entire operation. He's gone through the career path. He's gone from sales rep to TRD to top TRD to leader to sales manager to general manager to one of the top leaders in our company. And so this is the career path and opportunity for you. That's why people come to us for mentorship, for growth. And uh, I'd say number five, if you want to earn a million dollars in a hurricane, you're not focusing on on that collections aspect of it, eating the frog, being the real deal, you'll never get there. Now let's give you some of the secrets. We've got this map here. Um, if you're watching this and you're interested in this storm, this hurricane came up right through here. And, you know, going through a lot of this area, there's a lot of swamp land, but you get to Homa. Homa's got tons of tons of houses. We did a big project, a town hall project, got lots of commercial. How many roofs have we done down there in Homa? Um, I would say we probably did 100 roofs already in Homa. Uh, I'd say 100 residential roofs, multiple commercial projects. More importantly, if you go around to Thibodeau and some of these other uh Destrahan, there's another nice spot right over there with lots of big shingle roofs. They're out in the woods, country people, a lot of money, oil money, and you're talking about some rich blue-collar people, man. Mm-hmm. Some of these guys are millionaires in the cut, right? Yes, sir. And they pay, in their, in they, they pay in their full deductible? Yes, sir. And h- how many homes between Homa, Thibodeau, Destrahan out there? Uh, man, it's probably over at least 3,000 properties that's out there. I'd say more than that. I, what, I, what I think is, is that it's being underproduced, that there may be people that have talked to some roofers, but maybe they hadn't heard back. Maybe they hadn't got the roof done. And I don't see the action, the activity. Mm-hmm. And so in this whole storm, you go over here to this uh, quadrant that's more downtown. You got Metairie, you got Kenner, and you got, a, oh, my God. You got the whole downtown. You got the whole city in New yeah, Orleans. Yeah, it's the whole city. Oh, my God. What's that look like? Half the city completed. Uh, Three million population. I think half the city's completed. Um, But it means the other half is wide open. More importantly, uh, there's a lot of tile. There's slate. There's uh, Ludowisi. There's a lot of rental properties that aren't, you know, people that are like uppity-duppity, but they have hundred, two $200,000 residential roofs. They don't even know it. I think the real honey holes are kind of off in the cut. We always make our most money, you know, not so bad. So give them some of those, those little areas. If you go throughout here, tons on the North Shore, we're doing a ton of business, a lot of rich houses, Mandeville, Slidell, Covington, that's where this office is right here. Um, this is really kind of the honey hole. We, we set up here because we, we want to focus where the money's at and how, what, what's the North Shore opportunity on the North Shore? And- oh, Mandeville, um, I would say Hammond uh, for sure. 
um, and even going back towards uh, Baton Rouge. If you're coming to sell commercial, residential, the main thing is there's millions of damage to roofs in this path. I would say a year of hot and heavy Homa in by far the best storm of last year. It's going to be the best storm of this year until something else hits. There's commercial, there's tile, there's residential, there's guaranteed general overhead and profit on every job, 20%. Average 600 bucks a square. Profitability on this, the ease of the market. If you're in a winter market, you're piddling with your balls and you want to make a fucking million dollars in insurance restoration, stop. You need to get your ass down here. If you're watching this, you want to know kind of what this is like and um, what's it like living in New Orleans? It's great. Um, I, I've always been not a Louisiana fan. Uh, I always kind of just pissed on it, honestly. And honestly, they proved me wrong, man. It's actually pretty great here, man. The food's great. Uh, the people's actually great. I mean, uh, the people, I'm a New York style guy, so uh, the people here are more like a New York style. They just, they they lay it on the line. They'll tell you exactly how they really feel. They either going to deal with you or they not, you know. And uh, But honestly, I mean, I, I think it's a really, really good place, man.